cloth that were conceivably used by an artist, and the fact that the blood on the cloth is human blood, it would suggest that the cloth is probably authentic. The machine spent three days studying a piece of cloth. Not for art. Not for age. For patterns the human eye cannot catch. When the results appeared on screen, the lead researcher closed the lab door. The image showed geometry that repeated in ways linen should not hold. No brush could place it. No camera could fake it. The cloth had been photographed a thousand times across a century. But no one saw this until the algorithm looked. Something wrote rules into fabric. The Shroud of Turin is 14 feet of linen marked with the faint outline of a man, front and back, head to toe, wounds at the wrists, feet, and side, a face that hovers in the weave like smoke caught mid-drift. In 1898, a lawyer named Secondo Pia took the first photograph. When he developed the negative in his darkroom, he nearly dropped the plate. The faint smudge on the cloth had reversed into a detailed portrait. Clear features, defined hands, precise shadows. The shroud was already acting like a photographic negative five centuries before the camera existed. Scientists examined it for decades. No pigment, no binder, no brush strokes. The color sits only on the tops of individual fibers thinner than a human hair, microns deep, as if something kissed the surface and left without pressing. But that was before the machine looked closer. The image defied every test designed to explain it. Paint soaks into fabric. This didn't. Heat burns deep. This stayed shallow. Transfer methods leave directionality. This showed none. Under microscopes, the discoloration appeared only on the outermost caps of fibrils, not the cores, not the spaces between threads, just the crowns. Researchers measured the depth, thinner than a cell wall. Stranger still, the image carried information. When scientists mapped the darkness of each area, they found a correlation. Darker regions matched places where a body would be closest to cloth. Lighter areas matched distance, the nose darker. The eye sockets lighter, as if the linen had recorded space itself. No medieval artist worked this way. No known technique from any century could replicate it. Laboratories tried with lasers, radiation, and chemical vapor. Every attempt either burned too deep or blurred the edges. Then, in 1988, scientists thought they'd ended the debate forever. Three laboratories, Oxford, Zurich, Arizona, they received samples from a corner of the cloth and ran radiocarbon tests. The result came back clean. 1260 to 1390, medieval. The headlines declared, it's solved. A brilliant forgery, case closed. But the sample came from one edge, a corner that had been handled, displayed, and damaged by fire. Textile chemist Raymond Rogers examined fibers from that same area years later. He found something unexpected, cotton mixed with linen. A dye substance called madder, chemical signatures that didn't match the main body of the cloth. The corner had been repaired, rewoven after fire damage. If even a few threads came from a medieval patch, the date would skew younger. By centuries. Other teams tried different methods. X-ray scattering of cellulose. Pollen analysis. Some results pointed earlier, some later. The laboratories defended their cleaning protocols. Critics argued a contaminated sample is still contaminated no matter how carefully you process it. While scientists argued about age, they missed something hiding in plain sight. High-resolution photographs of the shroud existed for decades. Multispectral images capturing ultraviolet, visible, and infrared light. Thousands of data points across every square inch. 
Researchers had studied them by eye for years. Then, someone fed them into a neural network. The system didn't look for faces or religious meaning. It searched for patterns, repeating structures, mathematical relationships between pixels that human perception filters out. Principal component analysis separated signal from noise. Frequency filters exposed rhythms hidden in the weave. What appeared on screen wasn't what anyone expected. The AI detected geometry, not the rough outline of a body, but precise ratios echoing across the image. Proportions in the facial features that repeated at specific intervals. Curves along the torso that mirrored in ways fabric wrinkles don't explain. The symmetry survived across different light spectrums. It persisted when researchers removed obvious artifacts. When they mapped image intensity to theoretical distance from a body surface, the correlation held. Tighter than random chance. Tighter than artistic skill. The darkness tracked proximity like a rule. The geometry didn't just appear once. It repeated. Like a code. The team ran control tests. They fed the AI images of other ancient linens, burial cloths, painted fabrics, medieval forgeries known to be fake. None showed the same structure. They tested modern reproductions. Artists had tried for years to recreate the shroud using techniques available in the 14th century. Bas-relief sculptures rubbed with pigment. Acid etching. Iron oxide daubing. The AI analyzed each attempt. The patterns didn't match. The ratios on the shroud persisted under ultraviolet light, under visible light, under infrared. When researchers randomized sections as controls, the geometry vanished. When they returned to the original, it reappeared. The same proportions, the same mathematical relationships. Then they examined the blood. The reddish-brown stains behaved differently than the body image. They soaked into fibers. They showed depth. Chemical tests found iron, bilirubin, proteins consistent with aged blood. But here's what unsettled researchers. The geometric patterns continued beneath the stains, as if the image and the blood came from two separate events. One physicist reviewing the data used careful language. This doesn't behave like an artifact. It behaves like a phenomenon. Other teams stayed silent. Private emails circulated. One researcher admitted off-record that standard explanations kept failing at the edges. But when they tested it against every known method, nothing matched. Laboratories around the world tried to make a copy. Not of the shroud itself, but of the effect. The superficiality. The spatial mapping. The lack of pigment. Heat came close. Researchers pressed hot bas-relief sculptures against linen. The image transferred, but it burned too deep. Penetrated the fiber cores. The left scorch marks the shroud doesn't have. Ultraviolet radiation was next. Brief bursts that might oxidize only the surface. The discoloration stayed shallow, but the edges blurred. Diffused into surrounding threads, the shroud's boundaries stay sharp even under magnification, corona discharge, electrostatic fields, chemical vapor deposition. Each method solved one problem while creating another, either too deep, too blurred or lacking the distance correlation. Medieval techniques left traces, brush strokes, binder residue, capillary action pulling pigment between fibers. Forensic examination of the shroud found none of these markers. One team spent two years testing every historical method documented before 1400. Oil tempera, egg binding, iron gall ink, contact printing. Each attempt was catalogued and compared. Not one matched all the characteristics simultaneously, which left only one terrifying possibility. 
not supernatural. Category breaking. The shroud refuses to fit. Not clearly art. Not a clearly natural phenomenon. Not clearly an accident. It sits between classifications like a word without translation. Some researchers proposed an energy burst. Radiation structured by a body at the moment of contact. Brief enough to leave only surface marks. Intense enough to encode spatial information, but no known physics describes such an event. No experiment has reproduced it. Others suggested a lost technique, a medieval process so sophisticated it vanished without leaving instructions or failed attempts in any workshop record. Possible but statistically strange. A third group stayed quieter. They noted that if the image formed during a singular unrepeatable moment, then replication was never the right test. Measurement was. The data showed order. Order implies process. But the process remained unnamed. Scientists started using a word they rarely say out loud. Unknown. The Vatican made no statement. Custodians of the Shroud declined interviews. Researchers who published findings received quiet warnings about overreach. In private calls, scientists admitted what they wouldn't write in journals. The measurements were solid. The correlations were real. The explanations were incomplete. AI hadn't solved the mystery. It confirmed the strangeness, made it measurable, gave it coordinates and ratios and statistical significance, turned a relic into a data set that refused to simplify. New questions multiplied. Does the pattern extend to areas not yet scanned? Could non-destructive sampling from different regions settle the dating controversy? What happens if another cloth somewhere shows similar geometry? Each answer would require years. Funding. Access. Permission. But there's one question no one wants to ask. What if the order isn't hiding? What if it's waiting? The shroud has survived fire, flood, and centuries of hands. It sat through the invention of chemistry, photography, and carbon dating. Each technology revealed something previous generations missed. AI found geometry. The next tool might find the process behind it, or it might find that some patterns aren't meant to be decoded, only recognized. The cloth is still there. The data is still growing. The question remains open.